I um, am Chuck Mower. I live at Ford Depot Street. I am here tonight representing the planning committee in its entirety. Um, in our presentation, we'll be enumerating the people that were on it uh, according to the last minutes of last meeting. But I'd like to tell you that uh, this has been gaining a great deal of interest and uh, there are a number of other people that have uh, been very excited about jumping in and joining the planning committee uh, for this specific purpose. So to be as brief and professional as I can be, um, John has put up the first slide in our presentation. And it is an image of the uh, bridge that we conceive going over the actual site at Babuzik Brook. Uh, this bridge is actually the Flume Bridge in Franconia Notch, which we all agreed was a very attractive bridge and well suited to our location, generally speaking. And so we simply lifted the image and photoshopped it right into our own site. So it gives a pretty accurate representation of, uh, of what we have in mind and uh, what v valuable assets may accrue to us as a result of it. Uh, the location, for those of you who are not familiar, and oddly enough, th there are a lot of people in Merrimack that are unfamiliar with the location. Uh, we have here uh, a map of Twin Bridges Park, which is located in the central part of the community. Most people would know it as the MYA Park, but it is, in fact, uh, the Twin Bridge Park. And it was uh, assembled uh, by uh, a collaborative effort of a number of very far-thinking individuals early in the 20th century, recognizing the um, geologic uh, beauty and the importance of the site. Uh, they agreed to aggregate certain parcels and deeds um, to create the park for the beauty and enjoyment of the people of Merrimack. And that red arrow is the precise location where the bridge is intended to make the first crossing of Babuzik Brook. The yellow uh, area is the larger part of the Twin Bridge Park, and the blue area on the other side of the arrow is in fact a large island. And it is also part of the Twin Bridge Park. And from the other side, there is an existing bridge uh, that runs out to uh, Twin Bridge Road, Longer Road, I forget what it's named now. Um, and of course, it's been here for the enjoyment of people uh, for any number of years. Uh, I certainly grew up playing down there uh, and enjoyed it uh, a, a great deal. Um, so we have an exceptionally large parcel available to us for increased public use uh, in a multi-recreational scheme. Right now, the majority of the public use at Twin Bridge Park is centered around MYA activities. So this is the, uh, the anniversary committee, uh, so enumer enumerated. Um, going to have to move this a little closer if I'm going to see some of that writing, I think. You'll pardon me. <laughs> well, while Chuck is moving forward, uh, there's, a, there's a blue handout in front of you folks oh, with, okay. perfect, with, with all the slides and verbiage, if, if you can't read on the screens. Thank you. Thanks. As uh, Town Manager McCauley, uh, that may be the first time he's actually been called that. Congratulations, Paul. Um, as he spoke earlier to this subject, uh, at the uh, uh, anniversary celebration of the 250th, uh, the planning committee under the remembrance gift uh, gave the Abbey Griffin Memorial Bandstand. 
And so the 275th Planning Committee is forwarding this practice to the Town Council for their acceptance. Our gift will repair the failing bridge on an important historic site. Uh, it will also provide for a cultural improvement to the Twin Bridge Park. It is our intention to build a covered bridge that will not only provide access to a multi-recreational use of the park, but will provide a revenue-producing destination venue for events of all kinds. There really is no limit to the reunions, weddings, summer picnics, and dances that can be enjoyed uh, with this gift in the Twin Bridge Park. Our committee met with the Town Center Committee and we shared our concept with them. The Town Center Committee, after consideration, gave us a favorable review and ensured us that our ideas were consistent with the master plan and the Town Center Committee plan. And they voted to give us a favorable review to the Town Council. It's important to note that the importance of this historical archaeological site cannot be understated. The stone abutments of the bridge and the road itself are the first improvements made by settlers of Narragansett No. 5 in 1733. This portion of what we call Merrimack was given to the soldiers who fought in King Philip's War and was annexed in the second act of incorporation in 1750. Uh, it's recognized by a plaque at the end of Depot Street in what is known as the Reeds Ferry section of town. And in fact, that parcel that was annexed is the exact definition of Reeds Ferry. It went from the Sauhegan River north to the border with Bedford. So anybody that lives above the Sauhegan River is technically a resident of Reeds Ferry, of which I am the unofficial mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 200, down, uh, 200 feet downstream is the old coal grist mill. That's perfectly all right. Um, uh, it was constructed in the 18th century and was part of our earliest colonial days. Uh, the grains ground here were grains from Europe. There were wheat, oats, uh, barley, rye, and of course native corn. Uh, the miller would grind meal, middlings, and flour that could be eaten or traded for other goods and services. The mill dam and the raceway can still be seen below the bridge sharing the work of early stonemasons. This parcel was also essentially the same land that was given by the Massachusetts Bay Colony to the great Indian chief, Passaconaway. Uh, it was his favorite place, as he related, uh, and it's where he spent his final days uh, that we are aware of. He particularly liked this area because it was fertile on the one side of the river and it had wonderful hunting grounds on the other side of the river. And the two large islands in the middle of the river, which the town of Merrimack owns, uh, were his favorite because uh, they were blissfully uh, apart from any of the insect population that bothered the Indians anywhere else. <laughs> they had the paradise of an island. Uh, we today also have a paradise of an island, uh, and yet we, we underutilize it. And so as we move forward, we believe that much of this original Indian land original Narragansett number five land and original Twin Bridge Park area preserved can provide tremendous uh, additional recreational resources and cultural resources for the town of Merrimack. One of the things that um, we've realized in COVID is that P 
people are now willing, ready, and able to get out. If you have traveled anywhere at all, you see all the rail trail um, headways and so forth, full of cars, people everywhere. I know the town of Merrimack had some difficulty because there were so many people that wanted to get out and enjoy fresh air and nature. Uh, and what a wonderful change, uh, you know, from our previous uh, um, disposition to just accept the acceleration of life around us. We have much to give here in Merrimack and much to work with for future generations, just as people in the past provided for us, not the least of which was Abby Griffin. Yep. Uh, our predecessors would never know us. They left us something important for the future because they believed in generational uh, improvements and progress. Uh, and so uh, we have a rare opportunity not to just rely on their wisdom about the future, but to try to emulate their, their, their honor and their morality in acting like this in such a noble way on behalf of the public. So here we have an upstream and a downstream view of the abutments. And uh, you will notice that you can see some of the concrete uh, that was applied during the Great Depression by the Works Progress Administration. That actually was the last improvement to this particular site. The bridge on the other side of the island was washed out in what we all refer to as the uh, Mother's Day flood, if we all remember. Yes. Uh, and uh, uh, a, a very modest bridge replaced it. And um, this bridge needs attention. And uh, we thought that it was uh, perhaps better of us to put something more into the bridge crossing that could be better utilized, better stir uh, economic opportunities locally, better provide cultural opportunities, and better provide a more welcoming access to the land assets that we have at Twin Bridge Park. Uh, we were down there on uh, Martin Luther King Day, and albeit being a holiday, but uh, the bridge area and the island was really quite populated with people that wanted to get out. And uh, we talked to many of them about why they were there, where they were from, and so forth. And we had one family, the Fingston family, uh, who agreed to uh, be uh, in our video presentation. They live here in Merrimack, and they were very excited about the idea of utilizing something like this. And uh, we've been in communication with them, and should you decide to approve this project, they, like so many others, are jumping at the opportunity uh, to be on board and, and help us create something. You can see in the lower left-hand photo, particularly, the stone abutments. Again, I'd like to emphasize, this is the work of stone masons in 1733. 1733. And they are still there, just as they placed them, with a little bit of concrete patched onto either side. And, uh, you know, what a remarkable testament, you know, to the perseverance of our forefathers to create something out of the wilderness that was necessary and useful for them to access uh, the, the area. Um, and one of the other things that was also necessary in those days, well, for that matter, it is today as well, uh, we want access to economic opportunities. Well, they couldn't do much with the grains that they were raising agriculturally until they threshed them and got out the grains of the cereals. And then, well, they had to kind of grind them themselves like the Indians did with a mortar and pestle but that wasn't uh, very productive in the long run. They wanted to prosper. They wanted to sell. They wanted to, to make money. They wanted to advance. And so you had to have a mill. And fortunately, uh, the town owns uh, a grist mill 200 feet downstream from what we are calling the grist mill bridge. And um, 
it's an archaeological site that's beautiful. And it sits right at the mill pond on the end of this geologic cascade of some 80 feet over probably uh, 800 feet. Uh, and again, there are opportunities. We invite people to discover our past uh, that we might better uh, choose what our future is. And committee's proposal. Um, we have, by way of example here, uh, something that is tangible. You can take a look at it. You can see it. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can understand uh, how, a how a bridge is constructed and get some basic idea of the, of the magnitude of the undertaking itself. Uh, we're proposing a truss, town truss style or lattice uh, truss configuration. Um, the actual bridge will have a little bit of a camber to it, uh, and that is for two reasons. Uh, we want water on the inside of the bridge to drain off of the bridge. And from an engineering standpoint, when you create a camber, it vectors the forces back into the abutments rather than directly down on top of the bridge. You might see some old town truss bridges that are sagging in the middle. That's because they didn't have that little bit of camber to vector those forces. And we ran across um, a very interesting quote by an artist in England. And it, it just rang so true to us. Winter is a bridge to another time. And that's certainly what we have experienced here. Our winter, our winter of COVID, it is a bridge to another time that we're all very anxious to experience. And in this case, to another century. But we're not really referring to the preceding centuries. We're talking about the future century. This is a bridge to another century. When we think about the opportunities the citizens of Merrimack might enjoy with the completion of this project over time. Um, we're very excited to be some small and insignificant part of making that happen. So the concept will provide several major outcomes. An improved bridge and access will be realized a pavilion will be afforded for park users. Uh, regularly speaking, um, if you're down there and the weather's a little inclement, you can stand on the bridge for as long as you want. Um, you don't have to put up your umbrella and run for safety or anything like that. So it does have a certain pavilion use. It's uh, an historic site that will be preserved the very first road, actually the very first road period, Dunstable being the first inland community in Massachusetts. And Narragansett number five was just above the Sauhegan River. And when they organized, um, they were required to build a bridge and a road from what they called the Great River Road at the Sauhegan all the way to Piscataquag Village. And so its place in history is just incredibly um, important. In 1760, um, General Stark and his men uh, walked across that bridge down to Thornton's Ferry out to the King's Road and over to Fort Number Four. It took them three days to march. And from Fort Number Four, uh, they resupplied and they cut the first road across the state of Vermont in support of the troops at Crown Point, which we now know as Fort Ticonderoga. So we had men from Merrimack marching great distances to create a nation. 
to consolidate their possessions, both at home and uh, in a larger sense. And they walked across this bridge on their way to making history. It's incredible for me to think about these things in that historic sense. The, um, the town center plan will be supported. Uh, a revenue producing destination venue will advance local economic opportunities. Uh, and our history will give residents a deeper understanding of our past that we might better choose our future. This is a January 5th photo of the coal grist mill just below the proposed grist mill bridge, uh, circa 1741. The mill raceway in the background turned the breast wheel and gears that powered the mill. The dam in the foreground harnessed the great force of nature, Babuzik Brook. The power of water was central to the activities of early Merrimack, and it remains central to the activities of present day life here in Merrimack. And so we received a uh, estimate from uh, the Bridge Wright of America, Arnold Grayton, uh, whether you are familiar with him or not, I would highly recommend you go on YouTube and take a look at what Arnold has done in his life. Uh, I had the good fortune many, many years ago of meeting his father, Milton Grayton, who was the first covered bridge restorer and builder. And he passed that on to his son, Arnold, and, uh, and to Arnold's sons as well. It's, it's just something to see a, a Grayton, Arnold Grayton Bridge. It is done in the perfect way. I recall uh, going up to uh, Littleton one time to see the grist mill up there. And they had a little covered bridge that went across the river, the Israel River. <laughs> I was so disappointed because it was kind of a commercial grade kind of covered bridge. Uh, well, I, I guess it did the trick from the utility standpoint, but didn't speak to the spirit of New England, didn't speak to the idea of a true covered bridge. It didn't remind us of the covered bridges that we once had here in Merrimack, which of course we all realize could never survive in this day and age. But our lament can be restored by the construction of this bridge as a permanent monument to our early settlers, our town fathers, our early bridge makers, our mill makers, um, and stand as an iconic symbol that is economically vibrant in the future. We, we think that's a tremendous idea. So the contract uh, that he suggested was uh, for a 60-foot long bridge, uh, 12 feet inside to inside. Uh, this model over here is to scale. Uh, this is uh, representative of an inch equals a foot. So this bridge is uh, exactly the scale of the bridge proposed, uh, done in the town trust style, just as an early covered bridge would be done. Uh, the estimate is $450,000. And of course, there are um, considerations about fuel and material costs and so on and so forth. Uh, I was re I subscribed to uh, uh, a woodworking uh, paper online, and uh, I was reading yesterday morning that the price of lumber has been skyrocketing. And in the last year, the price of an average family home has increased by $24,000 simply because of the price of wood. And it's, it's all COVID related. Now in this particular case, this is very special wood. This is not something you would go down to Home Depot and get. 
Uh, Grayton buys his materials from a uh, commercial industry in Connecticut where these timbers, because that's what most of these are, they are timbers, not two by fours or two by twelves. They have to be graded so that they can carry specific weight loads and, uh, and uh, achieve certain standards for live loads and dead loads and uh, all of those things. Even though we're never actually going to drive over this, because believe it or not, getting people on that bridge is uh, having the same engineering effects on the bridge as vehicular traffic. And so, yes, the wood is expensive. The bridge is large, 12 feet by 60 feet. We, th we think that bridge. can accommodate an awful lot of dancers, wedding events, and so forth. It's our intention to see that power is brought to the bridge so that we can, we can have certain alarm systems um, we can have power for those events we intend to charge for, and uh, we can have monitoring cameras. Um, it's, it's quite the thing now to, uh, to have a live camera that anybody can tune into and see a particular covered bridge at any given time of the night or day, um, just as we did for the Merrimack Village Dam and uh, that particular proposal that was underway there. And so, while recognizing the sobriety of that kind of price tag, we have known entities on our planning committee. These are people who have always come to the fore in Merrimack to pitch in, to do, to create, and to advance. And I believe that we can do this. And our committee believes that we can do this. And it doesn't need to be done in a week or a month or even a year. We are prepared to see this through because what we are giving to our community is far more important than what each and every one of us individually could ever contribute. At this point, I would like to share the presentation with my colleague, uh, John Lestoka. Um, and when John's finished, uh, we have a number of people from the planning committee here. I hope they will come up and add additional remarks. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you have uh, concerning the proposal uh, and its its merits or, or its uh, its its uh, its weaknesses, uh, we need uh, all of the advice that we can get to ultimately come to a, a good conclusion for a project like this. I right, thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck.